There is a place on Earth where life is pushed to its limits. It is a land of stark beauty and brutal extremes, where survival is a constant struggle. The place is an Eden called Itosha. At the peak of the dry season, the heart of Itosha cracks under the scalding sun. Temperatures soar to 45 degrees Celsius as this African lake bed becomes a parched wasteland. But even here, in this hostile landscape, signs of life emerge. Migrating herds, desperately searching for water, use the lake bed as a highway. Its openness provides safety, giving predators nowhere to hide. But here in Etosha, translated as the place of mirages, water is only an illusion. On the fringes of the pan, thirsty animals find relief in water holes fed by year-round springs. These life-sustaining oases draw flocks of wildlife, from wildebeests and ostriches to springboks and oryx. Some come here for water, while others come to prey on those in search of it. Predators lay patient, shielded by the savanna grassland. Young lionesses prepare an ambush. When they attack, they'll use strength and all 130 kilograms of their weight to capture their prize. successful, the lionesses, young and naive, are still honing their skills. And for now, their cover is broken. They'll be between one and a half and two years old before they perfect the art of hunting. June arrives with relentless heat. The land has not seen rain for two months and may not see any for six more. 
Water continues to govern day-to-day -day life in Itosha. When August arrives, it marks the middle of the eight-month dry season. As Itosha grows more barren, the wind whips the dust into miniature tornadoes. Unlike Itosha's nomadic herds, bat-eared foxes find safety in permanent dens. Their large ears and keen hearing help them find nutritious insects hiding in the earth. Today, a termites. Ground squirrels also take cover in underground dens. The dry season brings fleas that plague their fur. They remain alert, prepared for predators. Springbok antelope, the dry season means it's time to court. The male makes a subtle approach, a few nudges on the flanks of a female, but with no luck. Courtship among squirrels is more of a tumble in the dirt. Springboks let their guard down as a cheetah watches from the scrub. This mother cheetah has five cubs. A second mature female, perhaps a daughter from an earlier litter, acts as a nanny, keeping the little ones in line. The cubs, only four months old, stay behind with the nanny while their mother hunts. They're eager to help but their playfulness may spoil her efforts. A springbok, the cheetah's favorite food and most plentiful meal on the Atosha pan, catches the cheetah's eye. Once the largest lake in the world, now lies dry for eight months of the year. Twelve million years ago, the rivers that fed it changed their course, and the lake slowly vanished, leaving only a depression of sand and salt. Yet beyond the pan's perimeter lies a vast and ancient African landscape. Plains of scrub and thorn, and sprawling stands of mapani trees. A 
succulent leaves and shoots of the mapanis attract elephants, desperate for a thirst-quenching treat. With few predators, the elephants fearlessly enter the springs with their calves. little calf, not sure how to use his trunk yet, wobbles to his knees for a drink. These African elephants travel to several water holes every day. When they're not eating, they're searching for water. Elephants move on, a flock of doves takes their place, and a predator comes to hunt. The African wild cat is primarily nocturnal, but will often hunt at dusk. It waits for the perfect moment, picking its prey carefully. Elephant herd, now joined by bulls, begins to travel in the cool of the evening. Their destination is a dusting site. These African elephants are one of only two groups that live in the desert. Elephants dust themselves to repel insects and to shield their skin from Itosha's burning sun. But this healthy habit can be deadly. While elephants have few predators, an invisible threat often hides in the dust. Anthrax, 
a deadly bacteria that can lie dormant in the soil for years. Once inhaled, the bacterium comes alive and kills the elephants. This elephant died from anthrax in a matter of hours. Now it provides a month-long feast for a procession of hungry carnivores. Vultures, in particular, come by the hundreds. Nature's best-known scavengers, they devour messy, rotting animals that no one else will. With their naked heads, they stay relatively clean after diving into the gut of a carcass. The feast ends, and what remains of a once majestic animal is left to bake in the sun. With each day that passes, the sun sucks more life from the land. The water holes shrink, and wading becomes risky. Fierce winds lift Itosha's baked earth into a choking haze of dust. But with the wind comes the hope of rain. despite dark clouds and lightning, and the oppressive heat lingers. With no choice but to endure, the animals grow tense and edgy. of searing drought.
Kosha, once parched and dusty, is reborn. The dry lake bed is now an inland sea, 80 kilometers wide, but only a few centimeters deep. Meanwhile, on the surrounding plain, another transformation is taking place. The dormant seeds of grass and flowers suddenly spring to life. For the next few weeks, the migrating herds will no longer be dependent on water holes. With the rebirth of the lake comes new life. All the springboks give birth within just a few days, each mother having a single fawn. sudden profusion of new life provides a bounty for predators as well. A cheetah family spots a newborn fawn. The five cubs, now seven months old, must learn to hunt. Together they watch and wait in the thorny scrub. Their mother watches with a critical eye as her cubs stalk their prey. As the nanny guides his siblings, one cub attempts his first hunt. learn the skills they need to survive.
Death is a part of life here in Etosha. But both the hunters and the hunted must bear their share of suffering. While some of the first newborn fawns perish, many more survive. For the cheetahs, the abundance of the season offers rare time to play. As the herds move on, they bunch together whenever danger appears. The zebras journey towards richer grasslands with their new foals in tow. the herd spreads out across the plain, it enters dangerous ground, the lioness's territory. Lionesses sleep up to 16 hours a day, helping to reduce heat exposure and conserve energy. But they are always alert to the scent of prey. Lions are built for strength rather than endurance and stalk their prey slowly and silently. will try to get within 30 meters before attacking. and suffocates her prey by clamping down on its neck.
Full from their earlier hunts, the lionesses eat little and leave their catch for scavengers. The vultures come back for the pickings. The nourishing rainy season provides grass to eat and plenty of water. The springbok fawns grow quickly and learn the tricks of survival. They imitate their parents by pronking. As if they had springs in their feet, these antelope can jump as high as three and a half meters. They sometimes use these stiff-legged leaps to confuse a pursuing predator. But for these exuberant youngsters, there's simply a way of celebrating life. season tapers off after three months of regular rain. For most, it's been a bountiful time, a chance to strengthen and renew and to prepare for the harsh months ahead. Soon, cloudless skies and a blistering sun will return. The lake bed, once again, will become a salty wasteland where dust swirls and mirages blur the horizon. Heat and drought now stalk the land. The long dry season regains its hold as temperatures reach 45 degrees Celsius and the last drops of moisture vanish. Herds return to the water holes and become ever more wary of predators. Lurking in the shadows, the cheetahs follow the herds. Cheetahs, too, are being watched. Predators dislike competition and will usually avoid their rivals, but lions often attack. As 
the cheetah family moves, the nanny becomes separated from the others. It's the perfect opportunity for the lioness. Cheetah's wounds prove fatal. With their nanny gone, the cheetahs seek refuge on the open lake bed. But more bad luck is to follow. The mother soon dies from anthrax leaving her five cubs orphaned before they have fully learned to hunt. Three immediately die of starvation. The last two starving brothers struggle on alone, desperately searching for the herds, their only hope of survival. Their lives hinge on their ability to kill, but hunger and exhaustion make it tough to keep up. One is already too weak to hunt. It is now up to his brother to find food for both of them. He spots a bat-eared fox resting outside its den. This could be his last chance to save himself and his brother. Cheetahs, the fastest animals on Earth, use bursts of speed to catch their prey. The young cub leaps into action.
Cub's failure seals his brother's fate. But the cub isn't ready to give up. The last remaining cub is so weak, it doesn't even attempt to attack the antelope walking nearby. Predators also begin to close in. The presence of the jackals signals that the end is near. Before sunset, the young cheetah dies. Meanwhile, the bat-eared foxes move to a new, safer den. With three small pups to nurture and feed, their mother prepares for the long drought ahead. The herds return to the water hole and with them, the lionesses. There is good news for the lioness sisters. One has given birth to three cubs. Meanwhile, another follows the herds towards the waterhole. Then breaks her cover. Tosha's timeless cycle of life and death continues.